Land Rover's Discovery Sport has evolved considerably in this updated form with huge engineering changes and a completely fresh interior. It remains a go-to choice if you're seeking a premium badged model in the mid-size seven-seat SUV segment, or if you want an SUV of this kind that can go where others fear to tread. This improved Discovery Sport features some fundamentally different engineering in terms of its fresh platform and its mild hybrid tech, but it's not the kind of thing that's likely to change the dynamic character of this SUV, nor should it. Set off in this car feels exactly as any Land Rover of this kind should, with a high set driving position and a relaxed loping demeanour that offers ride quality that improves the faster you go. Refinement is excellent and that's helped by this enhanced model's much stiffer premium transverse architecture chassis. That's a platform that also makes possible the fitment of a fresh range of 2 litre petrol and diesel engines, plus an all new 1.5 litre PHEV petrol electric plug-in power plant. An entry level D150 diesel manual front driven variant carries over its conventional engineering from the previous model. Uh, beyond that though, all the mainstream units are mated to automatic transmission and all wheel drive and they use currently fashionable mild hybrid technology to recover braking energy for use during low speed driving and to boost performance when you're accelerating. The engine name designation denotes horsepower with buyers choosing between P200 or P250 petrol units or more likely one of the diesels, a mild hybrid version of the D150 plus D180 and D240 versions of the same unit. All the engines are slightly hobbled by this Discovery Sport's relatively heavy weight. Upper spec versions weigh in at just over two tons, which is a lot for a mid-sized SUV these days. But in some ways, the solid structure's hefty feel rather fits with this car's evolved maturity into more of a fully fledged Land Rover product. It doesn't help running cost efficiency, of course. The D240 variant we're trying here has returns typical of the diesel lineup. The figures are up to 42.5 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle and up to 168 grams per kilometer of NEDC rated CO2. Rivals do better, but predictably none of those competitors can hold a candle to this car's prowess on the rough stuff. Uh, you would damage any one of them if you attempted to get anywhere near what this Land Rover can do off-piste. That's thanks to 212 mils of ground clearance, 600 millimeters of wading depth capability and an evolved terrain response to driving mode system which sets the car up perfectly for the kind of ground that you're traveling over. Now the core visual appeal of this car hasn't changed though. It's still clearly a Land Rover, uh, the clamshell bonnet and the distinctive two bar grill. They are brand staples which blend with the functional, practical and reasonably rugged look. At the same time though, as before, this car manages to avoid the rather clunky SUV style pavement presence that you will find with some segment rivals. Uh, the styling is instead suggestive of something nimble, compact, upmarket and smoothly aerodynamic. The smart front end helps here with sleek wraparound corners that reduce the visual bulk of the front overhang and are embellished by careful little touches of design. These vertical corner cutouts, for example, they're a fresh addition that comes courtesy of this revised model's restyled bumper. Uh, it has a different look depending on whether you order your car in this standard form or with the R Dynamic Pack. What's more significant though is what you can't see. Now Land Rover is keen to talk about this improved model's PTA, premium transverse architecture platform, which has made the body 33% stiffer than before and makes possible the installation of the brand's fresh mild hybrid engine range. Uh, we are a touch disappointed though uh, that this predominantly steel structure adds so much weight to this SUV. Time to take a seat up front in the so-called Sports Command driving position, a pleasant perch that positions you a little higher than you would be in most rivals. Now, if you've owned or frequently driven a Discovery Sport before, you'll notice the key changes immediately. Uh, the replacement of the past its sell-by date circular gear selector by this 
pistol grip F-type sports car derived shifter, uh, the much wider center console between the seats, the far classier four spoke multifunction stitch steering wheel with its capacitive switches and a much higher standard of fit and finish, which is now properly reflective of this car's premium brand status. And that's also aided by the now much higher standard of media provision. Land Rover's uh, larger Touch Pro 10.25 inch center dash screen is now standard fit and it includes Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring too. Uh, avoid the two base trim levels and you'll also get this customizable 12.3 inch interactive driver display replacing the usual instrument binnacle dials. Uh, finding an ideal driving position on these superbly supportive seats is easy. Plus there's more cabin storage space than was offered by the previous Model 2, uh, principally thanks to this larger storage box between the seats here. And there are lovely optional touches like this clever clear sight uh, virtual rear view mirror. Okay, time to move rearwards and experience this car from a passenger perspective. Now we'll get to the uh, rearmost pews in just a minute, but first let's try the second row bench that you'll be using far more often. Comfort here is much enhanced by the way that this second row's so-called stadium seating is slightly raised by 50 millimeters, uh, giving occupants a better view out. Uh, the backrest reclines too. Um, if you need more stretching out room, then the seat base can be slid backwards and forwards by up to 160 millimeters. Unfortunately, although the seat back split here is 40-20-40, the seats are new slide and recline in a 60-40 configuration. Okay, what about the third row seating? Uh, these pews are for children and occasional adult use only. In a car just 4.6 meters in length, they could never be anything but. Still, in getting to them, it does help that the door opens widely to 90 degrees for easy access. Pull this lever on the outer middle row seat shoulder and it springs forward in one easy motion to open up a route to the very back. Although you will still need to be reasonably athletic to use it. This middle row bench doesn't return to its original position automatically after you've um, pulled it forward. Instead, it remains set further forward so as to maximize third row leg space. Which uh, you're going to need if, as an adult, you're unfortunate enough to be stuck back here for any length of time. To be fair, in terms of legroom, uh, providing you can convince those ahead of you to push forward the middle bench quite a lot, uh, you won't fare much worse here than you would in an obvious rival. But in this case, things really aren't helped by particularly restricted headroom and the way that the shallow footwell forces your knees up towards your head. Let's finish with a look at boot space. Now with all three seating rows in place, there's just 115 litres of luggage space. But of course, most of the time you're going to be using your Discovery Sport with these rearmost chairs retracted into the floor. In that case, you'll have a cargo area which, uh, when it's measured up to the roof, is 840 litres in size. Obviously, it helps here that there's the flexibility to slide forward that second row seat base and adjust the backrest angles so that awkward loads can be accommodated. If you need more room, pressing on these buttons on the right-hand side cargo wall retracts the second row seat backs to reveal a 1,451-litre dry capacity or 1,574 litres if you happen to have a five-seat version of this car. Embracing the adventurous spirit that has defined the Discovery family for the past 30 years, this enhanced Discovery Sport is a car that we found to be a useful evolution from the original. In short, if you wanted one of these before, you'll want it even more now. And if you didn't, it really might be worth taking another look. Above and beyond was the objective in redeveloping this model. And considering the end result, you have to say that mission's been accomplished.